Hola, fanaticos del libro. It's me, Gwen, from the BookBeat bookstore, bringing you another video of young adult book recommendations, all based on a theme. And this video's theme is Hispanic authors and Latinx characters, in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month is an observance held between September 15th and October 15th, in which we celebrate the history, achievements, and contributions of Hispanic Americans. In recognition of the rich and complex multitudes of Hispanic cultures, I have tried to select authors from a multitude of Hispanic backgrounds. Please do not view this as an exhaustive list, but only a sound beginning in your explorations. If you're interested in learning about even more authors and their works, we suggest that you check out our bookshop, where we have lists for young adult, YA, middle grade, and adult books for Hispanic Heritage Month. Now let's get started. Vamos! Our first libro is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Ben Hamin Aleire Sainz. Our story opens on 15-year-old Angel Aristotle Mendoza, a normal, if lonely, boy growing up in 1985 El Paso, Texas. Aristotle, or Ari, struggles to connect with his father who suffers from PTSD as a Vietnam War vet and feels frustrated when talking to his family about his older brother, who is in prison. As a result, Ari has difficulty dealing with his emotions and making friends, until he meets an eccentric, squeaky-voiced boy with an equally odd name as his own, Dante. Dante teaches Ari how to swim, and the two boys develop a friendship built on poetry, comic books, and sarcasm. This is a connection that's even further deepened by their shared experiences as being second-generation Mexican-American boys. The two of them traverse the tightrope of being Mexican enough, while also dealing with parental expectations, machismo, romance, and more than one trip to the hospital. This is a book about pure and joyful friendship in the summer of our lives, teenagerhood. It's also about the loyalties that we have with our friends. And it's also very much a book about family. The parent-teen relationships in this book are so positive, much more positive than you tend to see in a lot of YA writing. And I think um, Signs does a really good job of dealing with family dynamics. Aristotle is a youngest son and Dante is an only child. And in both cases, he's able to show you how isolating both experiences can be. The writing style of this work is simple and very accessible, so it's great for reluctant readers, but it is very emotionally compelling and something that I think will appeal to audiences of all ages and levels. This is a book that will make you cry, make you laugh, make you gasp out loud, and it'll even make your blood run cold. If you like using audiobooks, or if you're a big fan of Hamilton, this is a book that I highly suggest you listen to, as it is narrated by Lynn manuel Miranda. For this book and any others that you'd love to get on audiobook, we hope you check out our affiliate, libro.fm backslash bookbeat, for all of your digital audiobook needs. Our next book got a name drop in our first video, Black Characters in Speculative Fiction, as it is written by E.B. Zaboy. Pride a remix of the Jane Austen classic, Pride and Prejudice. This modern retelling follows 17-year-old Zuri Benitez, living in Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. Her Haitian-Dominican roots tie Zuri very closely to her loud, loving, messy neighborhood, a neighborhood that soon may change with the appearance of a new family that have renovated a mini-mansion across the street. Zuri is already suspicious of the wealthy family, believing that they'll bring gentrification in their wake, and she immediately dislikes their youngest son, Darius, who she believes is stuck up. And the plot thickens when her elder sister, Janae, falls in love with the Darcy's eldest son, Ainsley. If you're a diehard Austin fan, you won't be disappointed with this book. It has the bones of the original storyline, with the love-hate relationship tied up in class struggle, and you also have all of your favorite original characters, with a little bit of a twist. Best friend Charlotte is now basketball-obsessed Charisse, and piano-playing middle sister Mary is now Mad Money Marisol. If you're a fan of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries YouTube series, you definitely need to give Pride a read. And even if you're not an Austin fanatic, there's plenty of contemporary drama in this book to really excite you. 
It discusses the pitfalls of social media, all the pressures of getting into college, as well as some heavier subjects such as gentrification and police profiling. And Zaboy puts her own original twist on things by giving you a bit of poetry that comes from Zuri's diary, the beginning of most chapters. So gear up for a colorful, snarky, love-hate relationship with a little bit extra thrown in. If you're already a fan of E.B. Zaboy, I'd also suggest checking out American Street, which takes place partly in Detroit, as well as her newest book, Punching the Air, with Yusuf Salam. My next book is a tad controversial. It's called Yaqui Delgado Wants to Kick Your Ass by Meg Medina. The title of this book and its opening line are meant to hit you like a gut punch, just as they do to our main character, Pi Dad Pity Sanchez, a Cuban-American girl living in Queens, starting 10th grade. Pity hates her new apartment. She's fighting with her mom. She misses her best friend Mitzi, who's just moved to Manhattan. And, oh yeah, a girl she's never met has just told her that she hates her guts. All Pity wants to do is work at Salon Carosan to earn some pocket money, study to be a zoologist, and maybe convince her mother to open up about Pity's absentee father. But Yaqui Delgado and her crew throw a wrench in Pity's already upturned life. Yaqui Delgado does not like Pity. She thinks Pity is stuck up, that she's not Latina enough, and that she's been flirting with Yaqui's boyfriend. And Yaqui wants to make Pity pay. This is definitely a hard story about bullying, about trauma, and the difficulty of getting other people to believe us when we're in pain. But it also has deeper themes related to judging others, standing up and speaking out when we see something wrong in the world, and a little bit about hope. The title of this book and some of the strong language used within the text has led this book to being an often challenged book in schools which I think makes it a fitting choice to talk about as we just came out of Banned Books Week. The way this book illustrates bullying and trauma and how school administrations can fail bullied students makes it important to talk about in classrooms, in spite of and maybe because of the strong language that's used. If you're interested in reading even more banned books, check out our frequently banned books list on our bookshop or check out our last video. Our last book comes from an author that I genuinely love, The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a really lovely book told with beautiful fairy tale esque storyline and has just a hint of Romeo and Juliet tied in. The stage opens on the children of two different families of traveling performers. On one hand, we have Lace, a Latina girl of the Paloma family. The Paloma women don scales and tails, preening and swimming as mermaids for audiences. On the other hand, we have Cluck, a French Romani boy of the Corbeau family of acrobats, trapeze artists, and tightrope walkers. The Corbeaux don dark feathers and appear to fly across the stage. The two families meet for their yearly convergence in the Almendro Central Valley for a large blackberry festival, fuming over a generations-long feud that still rages. Cluck and Lace have a chance encounter that leaves both teens worrying that they've been magically cursed by the other. Can these two break their respective curses and solve the mystery of their family's hatred? Or will the magic of their performances be forever tainted? This is a really beautiful story with elegant prose and just really light touches of magical realism that Macklemore weaves into the story that really leave the reader wondering if the bird feathers and the mermaid scales actually are magic or if it's all a performer's stage trick. This is a story of difference, prejudice, and understanding with just a touch of deepest heartbreaking sadness. I can't recommend Macklemore enough and hope that you add their latest work, Dark and Deepest Red, to your TV read list. I couldn't resist sharing these honorable mentions for this week's episode. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera, and Mexican White Boy by Matt De La Pena. Find these books, the other books listed in this episode, and others in our Hispanic Heritage Month lists on bookshop.org. 
Thanks for joining me, book fans. If there's a Hispanic author, Latinx character, or Chicano story that you think I've overlooked, let me know in the comments. And if you've got a topic that you'd like to suggest for a future video, I'd really like to know that as well. As usual, if you'd like to purchase any of the books that you've seen in today's video or others, you can always give BookBeat a call at 248-968-1190. Curbside pickup and employee assistance is available between the hours of 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to 5 on Sunday. Or you can email us 24 hours a day at bookbeatorders at gmail.com. If you're not local or you enjoy the ease of socially distanced online shopping, we hope that you check us out at our bookshop, bookshop.org backslash shop backslash bookbeat, the indie bookstore's answer to Amazon.